Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm here with David Llewellyn. David is a career management and coaching professional who currently serves as the talent acquisition and development manager for the Kirby Risk Corporation. He has developed and oversees sourcing the candidate experience, onboarding and career development for the corporation. He has over 25 years of diverse business and consulting experience, ranging from management, training and development, program development, and performance consulting to sales and career coaching. He brings this experience to bear upon his work in the field of talent acquisition and career management. Earlier in his career life, he designed, developed, and successfully led a profitable experiential model of education. The program, picture this, Community Hospitals Indianapolis, is a recipient of numerous awards and accolades, regional Emmy in children's television, Peabody nomination, Gold and Silver Apple Awards, Ali Award, honorable mention for diversity in workplace programs through the Indiana Civil Rights Commission. He also co-directed a hospital-based alternative medicine center. That is a really great bio and really interesting uh, experience that you bring to the table, David. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. No problem. Um, we're going to kind of get right into the questions. And I'm gonna take some notes well. So if you see me kind of looking down, that's just me taking, taking some notes on some of the great stuff that I'm learning about all of, all of my participants. The sure. first thing that I like to ask my participants is what is one word that describes how you're feeling in this moment? Oh boy, um, here we are, you know, in the, in the early days of COVID-19 uh, as, we, as we're trying to go along. So. Um, I, I'm generally an optimistic person, and even though I have some, admittedly, a little fear and trepidation these days, I'm still, I'm very hopeful. Let's, let's use the word hopeful. I like that. Thank you for that. And then our first real question is just, um, if you could walk us through your career journey from what you thought you wanted to be when you were younger until where you're at today. Um, it's a, it's a swervy path. So I, um, I think the first time I ever, I ever seriously thought about vocation was, um, my freshman year in high school. And I think it was true for a lot of freshmen. That was the year that students, uh, would take something called the, the strong Campbell vocational interest test. Um, and there were two career paths that showed up for me, um, social worker or minister. And I actually kind of considered both for a, a, a period of time. And, and this would be for perhaps another interview. Um, while I went to college, I went to under, undergraduate at um, the University of Indianapolis on the ministerial uh, of, uh, counseling psychology. Um, and there's, there's a lot more to that story. But let me just say, um, the, I felt the calling, so to speak, to be uh, out in the world, so to speak, not necessarily in ordained ministry. Um, so that's kind of where things started. And then what are some of, some of your career highlights? Um, probably the greatest experience I've had um, really comes back to my, my days at Community Hospital I was working as a therapist. I was getting my master's in counseling at Butler. And um, I came across a concept of using uh, improv theater um, and working with professional actors, professional facilitators to dispel myths and uh, misunderstandings about mental health issues. And that program became, became what became uh, became picture this um, and it was kind of a combination of psychodrama role play improv theater and experiential education kind of all wrapped up into one so that that's kind of been my my highlight uh, the, the work we did originally was with kids because I was working with kids on a psych unit and their families and took that experience and uh, took it out to eventually the corporate world and uh, became kind of have issue will travel and where we found success was helping helping organizations 
confront and discuss those issues that were sometimes messy and difficult to get your arms around. So any, you know, blank, fill in the blank in the workplace from uh, depression back when HIV AIDS was rearing its ugly head. We did programs around that, uh, sexual harassment, workplace violence, uh, conflict, right on, I mean, issues too numerous uh, to mention. But it was a format where we made it safe for people to speak the unspeakable and kind of dig into the issues and then to do some problem solving and try to come up with action plans uh, based out of those discussions. And the kind of fun thing, particularly working with professional, professionally trained improv actors, was that they would maintain their character and speak to the audience from that character uh, during our sessions. Um, so it engaged not just the head, but the heart as mm -hmm. well. And so can you talk a little bit about your role at Kirby Risk? Yeah, so Kirby Risk ended up being one of our, our clients for uh, sexual, sexual harassment and workplace uh, violence. And I got to know the um, Vice President of Human Resources, and he and I maintained a relationship, uh, this was like back in the mid 90s. So for all those years, he and I would occasionally uh, uh, connect. And he called me, um, I guess back in the summer of 20, 2014, and he said, you know, we're facing in our company, uh, I mean, really in a sense that the industry of electrical supply and distribution writ large, um, we're, we're, we're facing the graying of, of the industry. Um, so a lot of folks, even today at Kirby Risk, a huge percentage of people in their 50s and 60s, at some point they're, they're going to retire or want to retire. And so my, my task was to go out and find that next generation of workers, of people who would not only be a good fit for the job, for the role, but also for our culture. We're, we are, um, we've sort of promote and also very jealously guard um, the Kirby Rest culture. Which is, which is really based upon, um, as we like to say, kitchen table values. There was a Kirby Risk who started the company back in, uh, a battery company back in 1926, and his son Jim took over the, the, the helm in the early 1970s and remains at the helm here in 2020. I think Jim is 80 now or close to it. Um, and he has imbued the company with those, those values of, um, a hyper focus, a hyper vigilance about how we take care of our customers, but also how we take care of one another. And so I, I get to have the pleasure of going out and, and, and spreading those ideas, spreading the gospel of the Kirby Risk culture. So I very much, uh, my job the guardian, but also the sorcerer for uh, those, those kinds of workers who would be a good fit for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Uh, our second question is, what advice would you give to your, the younger version of yourself, the, the one that was at IU Indy or in high school getting ready to kind of decide what their next steps were? Um, quit being so hard on yourself. You don't have to figure it all out right now. I, I was, I mean, I was a fun kid, but I was like, overly sensitive and overly serious at times and worried too much about who I would be and where I would go when I grew up, so to speak. Um, so I would, you know, tell myself, like I tell young people today, you don't have to figure it out all at once. Perfect advice. <laughs> um, what do you wish that you would have known in regards to your own career planning and preparation uh, whether that was in high school or, again, in, in college, either one. Um, what are some things that you wish you would have known? Um, I wish I would have known, um, what I wish I would have, would have done, I suppose, was to spend more time with people or getting to know people who were doing the kind of things I was interested in. Probably had my nose a little bit too much in a book, uh, you know, think, and thinking about things too much compared to just going out and having those uh, experiences. I wouldn't figure that out until so much later. And then if students could do one thing to benefit their careers now, what do you suggest that be? 
um, it's going to be similar to what I just said. Um, you know, for most of us, we have skill sets, we have things that we can do and things that we enjoy that might actually lead us in the path of three or four different jobs, um, specific roles. And to try to explore those, those pathways, to learn as much as we can about what that might mean. And then again, to go out and have experiences. And you know that can be anything from just shadowing somebody who's in that particular role, um, to doing volunteer work. Um, and I'm telling you now some advice I, I used to give some of my, my, my clients. I once had a factory worker from a Ford plant out, out east and she had had a dream when she was up in high school of going into interior design. And long story short, um, there was a favorite shop that she would go to and she eventually talked to the owner and Friday mornings, the owner let her come in and spend a couple hours kind of being her helper. And that's how she sort of learned about the, the role and about that whole career field. So doing those kinds of things, I think would you know, be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then the last question, do you have any networking or job search strategies that you have done or that you might give advice to others on as well? Yeah, when it comes to networking, um, don't confuse quantity with quality. Um, I, think in, I think when you go into networking, the best attitude to have going in is that you're not going just to get something, you're going to give something. Now that's really hard when you're a young person or a, or a student and you don't have a lot of experience perhaps to, to share. What you do have is your enthusiasm and perhaps the gift of asking questions um, and being a good listener and being willing to learn um, and engage. And I think there's also kind of, um, I heard somebody, I think it was Thomas Singer, who said, you know, networking is kind of like dating. Um, you don't marry somebody on the first date, at least I think most people don't would, would do that. <laughs> uh, perhaps a few have. Um, he said networking is the same way. You know, you want to get to know somebody. Is there some kind of, is there some sense of, of, of is there some chemistry there? Is there um, a sense that you'd want them to have your back, but that you'd have their back? Do you connect on values? Do you connect on, on interests? You're building a relationship. Networking is about building a relationship. I once, um, when I was coaching some of my clients uh, in Indianapolis, there were a couple times, uh, one guy in particular, I remember very well, very shy person, and he and I went on a couple of networking um, uh, events, went to a couple of networking events together. And as we were walking around, I'll never forget, there was a guy who came into this particular event. It was being sponsored by, I think, by Junior Achievement. It was like one of those evening, they had, you know, some music in the background and cocktails and that kind of thing. And people were just casually connecting. And a guy kind of came in late and I kind of noticed because he was moving rather quickly through the crowd. And he had something in his hand. And eventually, by the time he got over to us, he had his hand, he had, he had cards. They had made business cards. And I asked him what was going on or what, what, he, what he was doing there. He said, well, I lost my job a couple weeks ago and I'm just going to every event I can and I'm giving out cards. And so he's like handing out cards. And I said, how many people have you know, actually called you? He said, well, nobody's called me yet, but I'm just hoping. And I, I kind of pulled him aside and I said, focus on the relationship. If you just, get, if you just meet one person that you connect with, that's better than you know, passing out 20 or 30 cars. So that's an extreme, you know, example, of course. Um, but, you know, so again, uh, qual quality over quantity, I guess is what I would say about networking. That's really great advice. Thank you for that. So I like to end these with a bonus question. And our bonus question is, what is the toughest interview question you've ever gotten? Um... The toughest question, I'm going to combine it with maybe the best question, too. Okay. It was when I left Picture This and I went to um, St. Vincent in my first sort of professional organizational development consultant role. Um, the interviewer asked me, um, are you running from something or are you running to something? 
And I had to really think about that. What am I running from? What am I running toward? And I felt like the right answer to say, oh, I'm running toward this new opportunity, which I, I was. I was very excited about it. But I think for most of us, there's probably a combination of things. The running from, I think, is maybe what we've learned about ourselves, that path we don't want to go down. Mm -hmm. So we want to move away from that and move in that direction of something we think is, 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 is a better fit, both in terms of what we can do and what, what kind of lights us up. I like that question too. So I've been, yeah, I've been compiling these questions and once I've gotten, uh, once we're kind of done with these candid career chats, which I hope maybe never, um, but I'll Great. kind of keep a running list of everybody's heart, toughest, hardest interview questions and I'll send them out too. David, thank you, oh, thank you so much for being our guest today. We really appreciate your insights, your advice, your experience, and we just want to say thank you. Brandy, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And have a good rest of the day. Same to you. Take care.